Buongiorno, sono Stefan, and this is Hyperbole. Ah, did I fake you guys out there? You thought you were getting into an Italian podcast? Well, you are. So buckle up and get ready for some Italiano, my friends. No, that's wrong. But uh, you do have a very special, pleasant surprise. I have this week Ali Makovsky, and she is gosh darn hilarious. We had her, well, I had her. I didn't have her have her. She guessed it on my podcast. That sounds weird. Okay, all right. Anyway, she came over and we did the podcast. And by the way, before you guys come out and be like, oh, you should be quarantined. I am. I am, sillies. I just do these podcasts weeks in advance. So this was almost a month ago. Ah, oh, man, this pit, this episode has been sitting in the oven. It almost burned, but I took it out right at the exact time. So it's golden brown and ready for your ears to just gobble up. Nom, 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 nom. We had an awesome time. Ali Makovsky is hilarious, and I'm going to keep calling her by first and last name. But Ali Makovsky, she is headlining now, or and she will be headlining back after the COVID-19 kerfuffle. But if you guys want to support her right now while you guys are quarantined, please head on over. In the show notes, I've got links to her Instagram. I've got links to her Twitter. I've got a link to her website. Go over there. Follow her. Make sure you are staying abreast of all the events as they unfold. So as she gets booked, as she starts to do more stuff after the coronavirus starts to hide its ugly head, then you guys are out there and you guys are on the prowl ready for some premium Ali Mikofsky. And uh, I just want to say one more thing before I let you guys loose on this episode. If you have not subscribed, please subscribe. If you've not told a friend, please tell a friend. And if you've not left a review, leave a review for Christ's sakes. Gosh darn it there, Kimmy. Leave a review. It means so much to us. It means so much to me. Not really the rest of the folks, just me. But it also means a lot to I, Apple Podcasts too. I think there's some sort of review goblin in there that just eats stars. And the more that it gets, the more that it rewards. So if we get more reviews up there, more five stars, that means Hyperbroly Podcast is going to hit it all the way to the top, baby. So please, guys. Please do what's right. And then if you want, while you're at it, follow us at Hyperbrally Podcast on Instagram and at Hyperbrally Pod on Twitter. Guys, you are so awesome. I can't do what I'm doing without you. I mean, I could, but it would be so much less rewarding. So I appreciate all the reviews that you guys have given so far, all the love that you've given us on Instagram, and every question, every quote, every nonsensical thing that you guys have sent us I read it and I love it. So love you is what I'm trying to say. And love yourself. Love yourself, but just love yourself. Don't love others yet. All right, let's get through this together. Okay, now the moments you've been waiting for. Let's start the show. Hi, 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 hyperbole. An advice podcast for deaf and, and friends to make exaggerated statements not meant to be taken literally. What was that, Stefan? Hi, 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 hyperbole. <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome to Hyperbole, a self-help podcast for the helpless. My name is Stefan, and I'm your host. My co-hosts, Anthony, Rand, and Eric, are all not here today. Well, here in spirit. But we've got a very special guest, though, that's going to make up for all of them not being here. She's been a semi-finalist in Stand Up NBC, received over 1 million, almost 2 million now, views on Just For Last Digital, and was a regular on over 100 episodes of the Comedy Store's Kill Tony podcast. She's also open for Joe Rogan at theaters and arenas, as well as headlining clubs herself across the country, including this beautiful state of Arizona. Everybody, please welcome Ali Makovsky. <laughs> crowd goes wild. Ooh, man, I can hear it resonating. Yeah. Uh, welcome. Hi, thank you. Yeah, thank where, you for joining. Where the f are these other two losers? Um, I mean, I think my brother's getting married. Today. Oh, it's your brother. Yeah, he's getting married. Yeah, and you're not there. I was like, well, I'll be an hour late, so it's fine. Wait, is this true? No, this. Is oh, not true. I was like, oh my god, what the hell? <laughs> I was like, this is some weird family dynamics. Is it actually your brother though? One of them is my brother. Okay, yeah. but he's not getting married today. He's not getting married. Is he married? Yes. 
Okay. So it'd be weird if you got married again. Yeah, today. yeah. just doubling down. Yeah. <laughs> that's tight. And I think that's a, that's illegal here, but maybe in Utah maybe. might be legal. Yeah. Or yeah. like renewing his vows. Oh, that, yeah. Yeah. yeah I was going to say, well, that's fine to miss. You don't need to watch someone get married twice. The, yeah. What's the etiquette for renewing vows? And I don't going, know. I feel going. like that's bullshit. I feel like if you're renewing your vows, it's because you think that it's on the brink of destruction so you're like this is the only gesture i can do to make it seem like this will work it's like trying to put glue on all the cracks that you've created through yeah. yelling and fights and cheating yeah yeah i agree or with it's that. like just it's like if you if you want to do, just have a party why do you need to like renew your vows just be like right let's just throw a party yeah a barbecue this is a bad time to announce that my wife and I are renewing our vows next week, but... Uh... No, you're not. I don't believe you anymore. <laughs> now whatever you say is like so discredited. <laughs> anyway, Allie, first off, how are you? Um, You know, I'm great. I, I really like it in Arizona. It's very nice here. Yeah. My sister just moved here to Scottsdale. Oh. Um, so I feel like I've been coming here a lot and it's really nice. For some reason, I keep waking up early which I normally don't do back at home. And mm -hmm. every time I wake up early, I already feel like I'm better than everyone. So it's like a good yeah. way to start my day. Yeah. Um, but then it's also kind of a nightmare because then I have to figure out when I'm going to take a nap during the day or else I'm just ruined. Do you time your naps? In what way? So I was <laughs> researching about REM cycles. And so you can go into REM cycles with a certain amount of time. But yeah. if you go too long yeah. and you wake up mid-REM, you're just totally yeah, messed well, up for the rest of the day. Yeah, so I'm familiar with the with the old REM uh, cycle. But I what I do is I'll have an ideal time I would like to nap. Say it's 30 minutes or an hour. But your body right. naturally knows it's REM cycle. So I'll right. set like... I'll set an alarm for a time that's like a little bit later, but I'll hopefully count on myself to wake up earlier than the alarm oh, from a nap. Okay. That's but good. then I have the alarm just in case I'm like super indulgent in the nap and that Your body way I goes don't too miss far. things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, I used to have an app on my phone that would like you would set a time that you needed to wake up, but then it would process your sleep. Like mm -hmm. you would put the phone on your bed and it could like tell when you're moving or making noises and stuff. And so it would like, it would time your sleep based on when you're completely still. So that way it would like wake you up when you're not in a REM cycle. Oh, interesting. I didn't really hear about weird. that part. Yeah, wow. but it was like, I don't know. It's too much. I don't, I'm like, I'll just wake up when I need to wake up. That sounds like yeah. a pretty fair thing to do. Yeah. Nice. I don't I don't care about my sleep regimen too much. Oh, that's good. I'm still young, so I feel like it doesn't affect me as hard as it will in the future. Yeah. And you're 24 years I'm old. 24, yeah. 24, and you've been doing stand-up for five years. Yeah. So you started when you were 19. Yes. So how did you end up getting started in stand-up? So I did my first open mic when I was like 17 or 18. I was, uh, I was in high school, and I was watching a bunch of comedy videos on YouTube like videos from the Laugh Factory and stuff. And then because I'm from Long Beach, California, which is like 30, 45 to an hour, depending on traffic, uh, minutes away from the Laugh Factory, I just started using my sister's ID to get in. And so I'd watch a bunch of shows and I'd go there all the time. I was going so much that one of the comics, Dom Herrera, was there and he was like, are you following me? Because I was there so often. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. And so... <clears throat> Eventually, I was like, man, I want to do what they're doing. Like, if I could just perform here yeah. or, like, just do comedy, like, that would be the coolest thing ever. And so then I finally just, like, built up the courage to do it. And uh, and I went and I did my first open mic at the Laugh Factory. Wow. Yeah. I just had, like, no idea that there's, like, coffee shops and bars and wherever to do an open mic. And so I did that. And then... It was such a nerve wracking experience. And I'm like someone who loves to perform. Like it's my yeah. favorite thing. It's all I've ever wanted to do is to entertain people. But just that initial time was like so scary that I was like, I don't know how I'm going to do it again. Really? And what was the reaction of the crowd? Because I'm sure at the Laugh Factory, the expectations are high. That's your I mean, first time. At the open mic at the Laugh Factory, it's like. Oh, true, true. It's all other comics and it's like in yeah. the Laugh Factory is like a tourist trap. So it's like people who are there visiting from like Italy and like, you know, wherever, Texas and 
so they can't just, even understand English. So yeah, yeah, there was a guy filming my set, and I still have it saved on my computer. It's so bad. I'm, like, shaking the whole time, and he's filming it, and he's from Italy, and he's just, like, laughing ridiculously at everything, <laughs> like, almost in an annoying way that's, like, not <laughs> helpful. Uh, and uh, And so, yeah, after that, I was just, like... I need to get over this, but I don't know how. So I went to college for like kind of a year. I dropped out pretty quickly Mm -hmm. because I was like, I just want to do comedy. And then after that, I just like took an improv drop in class because I'm like, I need to get over this stage fright. And I left the class early and I went to this coffee shop down the street and they were having an open mic. And I was like, whoa, this is a sign. So that's when I started doing it. So, yeah, I started when I was like 19. Wow. And now 24. Yeah. You've opened for Joe Rogan. Yeah. Where do you see yourself in a year? A year? From here. Probably back at the Tempe Improv. Uh, no, I don't know. In Maybe a, a little more tan since you're going to be in Scottsdale so much. I know. Hopefully. I don't think I'd tan, though. I'm, it's pretty impossible for me to get tan. But maybe I'll have more money to get fake tans regularly. Yeah, that, there are a lot of places for that in Scottsdale, that too. That could be so. a thing I get into in this next year. I don't know. A year goes by so quickly that it's like really hard to say what that will look like. But right. I imagine just like the same thing I'm doing now. So I just started headlining. Like mm-hmm. like this weekend at the Tempe Improv was my first like official headlining club show. Congratulations, by the way. Yeah, so that's really cool. So I imagine that this year will just be more headlining and like getting my hour that I'm doing like better and more improved and having it be like a really tight, solid hour. Mm -hmm. And then, I don't know, just seeing where that goes, depending on how much I like that hour. That's awesome. Because then hopefully I'll be able to put something out either just like I don't even know I don't think I would even want to put out an hour special or anything right now just because I'm still so new like five years really is like nothing in the grand scheme of things Mm -hmm. but maybe to put out like a 15 or 30 minute special um just something so because I don't really post my stand-up that much and people are always like put something out post your stand-up and it's just something that I'm like I hold so close to me that I'm like I would I would prefer people come out and see me and have that experience um But yeah, I, I hope within the year that I'll have something that I've put out um, that people can see. But I don't have any like lofty goals for this year. I just want to like continue to like work on my comedy and make sure that that's really good. So that way when people do see me, they feel like, you know, they got what they came to see. Yeah, yeah. They got their yeah. money's worth yeah. in chuckles. Yeah. Well, good. And then on top of comedy, you're also do or stand up. You're also doing a podcast, Resting Bitch. Yeah, I do have a podcast. How did that come about? Well, um, okay. The podcast <laughs> thing happened because so Rogan started having me open for him and I was just like, these people are seeing me for the very first time. And because I don't post any of my stand up online, like they're only seeing me do 10 minutes when I open for Joe Mm -hmm. and I wanted there to be a way for people to kind of see me get to know me so in that way when I do come back to wherever they live whatever city they're in and I perform you know they know who I am and what I'm about and also for people who just like are comedy fans who are curious about what it's like to be Mm -hmm. you know a young Mm -hmm. comic kind of like in that period where she's getting to that next level I feel like yeah um to kind of like be a part of that journey I think it's really interesting because you know there's so many people who have podcasts who are already successful Mm -hmm. and you kind of know their story but I feel like there's not many where they're like in the process of hopefully getting to that place so I just thought it'd be a weekly podcast where I talk about what's going on sometimes I have guests on I had my dad on and I know I really want to listen to that episode it's a fun one he (laughs) he he always is like when am I coming back on your podcast he had a little bit too much fun on it (laughs) oh so you have to reject your dad now you're like I have "Mm." to build it up I have to have people want him more because people are already hitting me up being like when's your dad coming back on and i'm like oh i need to wait he he'll 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 think that it's becoming like a regular thing for him <laughs> oh, man. yeah but it's super fun yeah i just have people on that i like talking to and um regardless of if they do comedy or not just fun people right. that i um enjoy hanging out with and yeah it's just kind of me hanging out and talking about what's going on and yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, I've listened to several episodes. I think it's a great format. I've listened to a couple where it's just you. And I actually learned that you went to go see Mike Turner at the comedy store. Yeah, yeah, when he did This Week Sucks Tonight. I love Mike. So I, we were lucky to get him on episode 113 of Hyperbole before uh-huh. he left and moved to L.A. <gasps> yeah. But he was a huge icon here in Phoenix. Oh, I know. The king. Yeah, yeah. The so, king of Arizona comedy. Yeah. Really funny guy. Super witty. Yeah. Um, He's I, I, so charming. Like he, my mom met him because my mom was at a show with me once and Mike was there. And he's just like so charming and funny and personable. Yeah. He's like, I've thought about this many times. I'm like, he would be the perfect husband because he's just like caring. He's supportive. He's there. He's like good to hang out with in groups, Mm -hmm. you know, like he's Mm -hmm. just one of those dudes who's like everybody's friend. Is he single? He is. Are you single? I am. Maybe. But I get too distracted with guys. I have thought about it uh, a couple times, me and Mike putting us together. Mm -hmm. I just get too distracted with guys. Does Mike know about it? Um, probably. I have a crush on everyone. So like as much as I want to be like, it's special, it's not. Like I have envisioned myself marrying every guy friend I've ever had. Um, but I just get like way too distracted and carried away. Yeah. And so I'm I'm uh I'm not involving myself with anyone for at least a year. Really? Well, actually, I guess until my birthday. When's your birthday? September 8th. Okay. Yeah, so I have a few months of purely alley. Wow. Just me. And then Bachelorette. You've got the guys lined up for your birthday. Give roses to the best ones. see. I have a couple options right now, but it seems to always change. It's always like a Ferris wheel of... Uh, potential partners, but it's what a, never what a beautiful metaphor! I know, isn't I love, that, isn't it? Ferris wheels are the horniest ride. Oh, they are. Uh huh. Because you're in your little uh, your own little bubble. Heights are scary. So you're like, I might die. I have to take another risk right now. You know, I feel it like it puts things into perspective. You're like, if this thing drops, what do I want to say to the person I'm in this bubble with? That's true. It presents the element of danger, but the level of nausea is low. Mm-hmm. So you don't see a lot of people making up on the tea, spinning teacups yeah. or roller coasters. No, no but... hand jobs on the cups. Oh, no. Oh, no. But on the Ferris wheel? Very sloppy wheel? ones if there are. Yeah, but, absolutely. But yeah, the Ferris wheel, oh, fond memories. Mm-hmm. <sighs> yeah. Well, awesome. Is there anything else that you want our audience to know about you? No, <laughs> no, they'll, f- they'll figure it out they'll, if they they'll want s- to. They'll slowly get into you. I feel like there's so many ways to find out things about people that whenever people are like, oh, like, is there anything else you want to say? And I'm like, knowing who I am as a person, whenever I've been like interested in someone or, you know, like hearing them on a podcast or Instagram or whatever, right. I do a deep dive after. So I'm always like, if people want to know more about me, I'm very accessible to find out more about, you know? Exactly. Do you hear that, people? So you're going to have to find Ali on Instagram Easy. at not Ali Mac yeah. or her website, AliMakovsky.com. Yeah. To find out more. Yeah. This is just a little teaser. Just a little teaser. Nice. I love yeah. it. All right. Now that everyone's titillated, let's move on to the self-help portion of the podcast. My Are you ready? I'm so ready. All right. So we like to start off with a quote of the week. Okay. And this helps fuel us and get us inspired for being able to provide wisdom for the rest of the segments. Great. Allie, do you have any inspirational quotes that help get you through your days? Not off the dome, but um, I would say, well, oh, Sarah Silverman, uh, she had... She tweeted something that's like, she looks in the mirror and she says, like, I'm strong, I'm healthy, and my body works. And I just thought it's like so simple because there's so many times where you're like reflecting about yourself or just like talking badly, poorly about yourself. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's so simple. It's just like, I'm healthy, my body works, you know, I have hands I can grab things with, I have feet that I can walk on. I have eyes I can see with, you know. Yeah. Like, I have everything that I need, and everything else is just, like, you know, an added bonus. I That is such a nice... It's a simple quote, but I feel like so many people take everything they have for granted. Yeah, 100%. The body so much. Sometimes during the week, I'll just be like, wow, I'm so glad that I have hands. Yeah. So that I can do my job, because most of it's on the keyboard. 
So yeah, it's, it's crazy how much we take for granted and how much we like look into so many like detailed like like the tiniest things that we'll criticize about ourselves or like you know be upset about and then it's like when you really look at it we're doing fine i'm doing fine well that's fantastic yeah it's so nice to have such a meaningful quote because the quote that we have this week is from a robot Oh, it's great. called Inspirobot, and it's an AI-driven machine that takes some of the most motivational words, smashes them together, mm. and prepares the most perfect inspirational oh, quote. I love that. Yeah. I sound like a robot. <laughs> oh, a little bit, but a... Kind of. A, but a, a nice robot, one that I would listen to. Oh, that's nice. One that I have listened to. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, I'm going to read this week's inspirational quote from Inspirobot. It says, good bosses learn, superb bosses smash. So, damn. What does that mean to you? That boss Allie? is getting me too <laughs> real soon. <laughs> so, <laughs> if your boss is smashing, you got to find a new job. Oh. Or at least get a promotion. You took it that way. I was thinking that he was very demanding, so he would smash things and be like, "I want this report today." Mm. So he pre- Will you read it again? Good bosses learn. Superb bosses smash. Good bosses learn, superb bosses smash. No, I I think that's like, you know, if you're a good boss, it's like you're learning, you're educating yourself, you're educating your team, you're doing like, you know, a good job. But if you're a superb boss, you're not only doing that, but also you're getting chicks and, you know, you're (laughs) such a great boss that everyone's like trying to smash. Just dip in your dick in that that puss okay yeah, absolutely nice. unless you're a female boss then you're smashing that d right yeah. you're getting dipped yeah, okay you're getting dipped and licked and <laughs> flipped these are great metaphors i absolutely. love it I-, I feel like you're absolutely right because if you're a good boss you've got that confidence and then you're able to just go get that d or v yeah why else would you try and be a superb boss no other reason no other reason to get yeah. into the boss game so i mean if you're learning that's fine i guess but if you're smashing that's what you really want to achieve that's the goal that's the ultimate goal. A pension <laughs> and a smash. A retirement fund and a good old fashioned D and V. Oh, all right. It almost sounded like DMV, which almost, is which is completely undesirable. Well, it depends on if you're smashing at the DMV or not. That's true. I feel like STDs are crawling in the DMV and that's yeah. probably why. All yeah. the smashing. I've only been to the DMV a couple times and <laughs> Were, Did you smash? No, but I had positive experiences. Hopefully you left a review because the reviews I've seen have all been horrible. Yeah, well, people talk so much shit about the DMV that I was like, oh, no, this is going to be bad. And then the two times I went, it was like, great. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, the bosses were probably smashing there. So Yeah, they're smashing. That Hollywood DMV, they're getting wild. Oh, that's why they call it DMV. Yeah. Nice. Dick meets vagina. It's a very heterosexual. Uh, Maybe they need to change that yeah, a little bit. Yeah, it's a very heter- heterosexual DMV. But DMV, O, D, N, D, O, V, M, V. Yeah, there's a lot of options. Yeah. All right. We'll have to hit up the government about that. Yeah, put it in their suggestion box. Yeah. All right. Moving on. I feel like we've fueled ourselves with inspiration. Let's move on to the meaty part of the podcast. Mm-hmm. And this is the, 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 the beef. Now, this is the part of the podcast where we've got questions from fans that we found on Reddit. We've got business advice. We've got celeb advice. Everything that a good self-help podcast should have. Now, we're going to read the first question. And this is from Reddit. It's found by our fan, Hobbs33. Thank you, Hobbs. Now, this goes... How to introduce myself to neighbors. Is he from the UK cause, or Canada? Because he spelled neighbors with a U. Yeah, I think so. Should I do it in an accent? No. Okay, good. Because I can't do an accent. <laughs> All right. Hi, guys. I bought an apartment and I've said hi to my neighbors in passing, but not really introduced myself properly in the past few weeks. I was thinking about dropping them a card through their letterbox, introducing myself and telling them a few things about me. I planned on leaving them my number so they could just text me or call me if they have any issues or if they needed anything from me. But is this too much? Yeah. I want to be a. An- he said, I want to be a nice neighbor, but not the creepy one who's a bit over friendly. Sincerely, howdy, neighbor. Ew, I don't like this at all. 
That's so weird. Why would you leave a note? That's so psychotic. That's very serial killery to leave. I mean, I get where you're coming from, and I think that's like a very nice idea. But just knock on their door. Be like, hey, what's up? I just moved here. I've said hi to you a couple times in the hallway. I just want to let you know that I live in this apartment number and I'm super down if you like, uh, no, don't say that. Uh, what, uh, like, what were you going to say? I was going to say like, I'm super <laughs> down to like help you guys out if you need anything. Like I'm always available, you know. Whatever. Oh, okay. That was way better than I what know, I thought sounded, you were going to say. I was say. just like, that's the wrong wording. <laughs> but just to like do it in person. Don't leave a note. That's <laughs> so creepy. Really? Yeah. Either don't do it at all. Just keep <laughs> saying hi and passing or like literally just go up to them and be like, what's up? I want to be like one of those neighbors that you can just like rely on. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. I have spices. I have condiments. I have, you know, blankets and water. If you guys need anything. <laughs> if you need a shelter, yeah. you need to stay with me. Yeah, that's kind of true. And to your point, I feel like if you're leaving them a note, that's already showing that you're not really that available. Because exactly. you're not there in person to tell them and how down gonna, you are. And they're not going to know who you are from a note unless you like include a picture. And that's weird. Yeah, I don't, I don't fuck Maybe a that. series of headshots, too. <laughs> yeah, just a couple <laughs> options. Like, this is my serious look. Here's my side profile. This is what I look like in an emergency, and this is what I look like when I'm pensively thinking. Uh, all right, so you're saying no note. Note's no, too much. No, no. Who, like, the, the last time I wrote a note was middle school when I asked my crush if he liked me, so don't do a note unless you're trying to bone anonymously. <laughs> yeah, without pictures. Yeah, well, then you could set some different types of pictures. Ooh. All right. Moving on, we're going to get into our next segment, which is celeb advice. Mm -hmm. Celebs may seem like near perfect examples of human beings, and they are, but they get in a pickle sometimes too, which is why we dedicate a segment of our show to give them even more attention. Now, Allie, this is the part where we ask our guests if they can do any celebrity impressions. Can you do any celebrity impressions? <sighs> No, I do like, uh, sometimes I do like, uh, I really like singing. Like I very much enjoy singing. I don't think I'm a great singer, but I'm decent at it. But I, I think the only reason why I'm decent is because I can like kind of pick up other singers and just like try and copy them. So I feel like I do better celebrity singer impressions than I do just like just boring speaking slot. yeah okay so can you do an orlando bloom singing not at all oh, okay not at all what are what are some good singers i mean like no doubt like one stefani oh okay there you but go But i'm not gonna do it because i get it's so funny i get so nervous like what actually like singing like when i'm put on like in my stand-up I'll, I'll do some bits where i kind of like jokingly sing but to yes for there to nice be like hat. some sort of yeah but for that for there to be some sort of like expectation because with stand-up, no one expects me to sing and do a good job. I see. So it's a surprise. But if I'm like, oh, yeah, I think I can do a good impression. And then they're like, okay, let's hear it. Then they're expecting me to do... I'm expecting you to be flawless. Yes, yeah, so I can't do it. I will judge I'm you just like Katy Perry judges on American Idol. Dude, I have been watching so many American Idol clips recently. Oh, yeah? Do you I like it? I don't know it? what got me into it. I go through these like weird YouTube K-holes where I'm like obsessed with a certain thing. Uh-huh. And I've been watching so much uh, American Idol clips. It's so nice. I've been watching it with my wife. It's an interesting dynamic. Yes. Lu I used to be able to do a Luke Bryan. Oh. Not singing, though. Because you have just, that, like, bassy, yeah. low register. Uh, you have a great voice. Yeah. I mean, that. I feel like that You're also... rolling your eyes, but you're saying yes. Yeah. But... I mean, I'm just thinking, I feel like that, that can be anyone. Like, it almost was like Cleveland from the Cleveland <laughs> show. Like, it was al almost... Oh, oh. Oh, hi, Peter. Oh, I'm yeah, Cleveland there you go. Brown. Wait, but isn't that a... Is that Cleveland's voice? I don't know. It's a decent I impression of I someone. So. It's <laughs> I don't know if it's Luke Bryant or someone else, but it is... It I get my Luke Bryant and Cleveland Brown mixed up sometimes. Yeah. It's, it's really it's tough. It's a fine line between the two of those It guys. really is. Yeah. Anyway, so no singing then? Mm -mm. Yeah, I get way too nervous. But there is one line at the end of... Uh, What's the song from No Doubt? It's like... Uh, uh, B A N A N A N. No, that's, uh, that's just Gwen. That's not No Doubt. Oh, yeah. She's like, 
Oh, fuck. Oh, Sunday morning. But at the end, she like really enunciates some of her words. And at the end, she says here, but she drags it out and she makes it super whiny. So she's just like, oh, is it where she's like, yeah, go ahead. Here. <laughs> That's it. That wasn't me trying to do it good. It's just me saying what she says. I was going to say that wasn't no enunciated pressure. very much at all. I got nervous. Gonna... I, sh- I freaked out. All right. I well, panicked. maybe, maybe later then. I panicked at the disco on that one. Oh. Closing the goddamn door. I feel like a kid playing with your phone. I'm oh, it's like, fine. If you want to go into the Ooh. apps too. If you want to post oh, as me, games? you can post as me. Okay. And then we'll see if I the... I kind of like to do that. Oh, God. All right. Here. There we I go. Got it. Instagram. Oh, I got it. Oh, man. That's the, that's the hyperbole page, I think. Perfect. I'll promote myself as we speak. Oh, that's awesome. Okay. I, I would just, should we just go on? Yeah, we're just going on. All right. We're going to get into this celeb advice. Now, this juicy goss comes from Perez Hilton. Oh, well, he's the juiciest of gossers. So juicy. And we're going to just <laughs> split into that peach with this article that goes, Kylie Jenner names her famous toes after the internet's obsession with her feet. <gasps> I saw that. Well, I didn't see that she named her toes, but people were freaking out because she posted a picture with her sister on vacation and apparently she broke one of her toes when she was doing cheer and um and so one of her toes is like a little bit weird and people were like oh my god freaking out about her one toe and she went off that got her that's her sensitive point i think i can skip half of this article because you just recapped it perfectly yeah oh okay she's got some janky looking toe where you know what she does not why are we so hard on her she's a perfect beautiful woman and she has one little crooked toe hardly even noticeable and we're all freaking out okay i have had one bunion surgery and i have thick old wide boat feet they're not pretty. And if people are shitting on her for one bad toe, then do not even think about asking for feet pics from me. Yeah, I, I was going to say, I think that's the reason why people have been judging. Because there's so m- I feel like that world is there. It's omnipresent. Oh, it's there. The foot fetish lovers. Oh, it's there. And, oh no, personal experience. No, people just sometimes ask if they can get pictures of my feet. Oh, Lord. And I just, do you I, oblige? Well, no, because no, no one ever names a price. Oh, so you got to get into that negotiation if, stage. Because I don't I don't open those messages on Instagram. People message me saying feet pics question mark. I'm not going to respond to those. They have to give me an offer in the message and I will consider. But and I and I'm versatile, you know. I'm I'm I have an option cuz I have the bunion surgery foot and I have the bunion active foot. So it depends on what you like. I got two different flavors. Oh, I like for that. the foot community. It's almost like a Baskin Robbins. Yeah, absolutely. But instead of thirty one, it's, it's just, just two. two. Yeah, I okay. keep it simple. So yeah, more like a Costco, I guess. Yeah, it's it's the bare minimum, but you know, it gets the job done. They work. I can walk on them, but yeah, you have stop a body foot and it works. Shaming people, yes. Stop the feet shaming. I feel like this is an opportunity for Kylie. Maybe she could start to... She needs to... She needs to... Advertise with her feet. Yeah. And I don't know. I'm just... I'm so... I'm self-conscious about my feet. And it's like, if people are shitting on Kylie's perfect toes, then, you know, it's just not fair. I agree. For my big old dock worker feet. Do you think she could brand with them? Maybe get tattoos of Nike on the big toe and then... Skims or whatever it is from yeah. the little toe. Yeah, definitely. She could get money for that. I should get money for that. I should get a foot tattoo. I feel like toes are the new NASCAR. You Maybe. Could just... I'm going to NASCAR tomorrow. No way. Yeah. My first time. That's all. I've never been to NASCAR. Yeah. I only, like, every time I think of NASCAR, I just think of, like, Talladega Nights. That's exactly what I yeah, think of. Yeah. When too. she's like, the vibrations. <laughs> she's like, orgasming in the pit. <laughs> I'm very excited. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. I'm excited for you. I Good hope, luck. Thank you. I hope, I don't, you know, like, basketball players are super hot. Football players are kind of thick, but sometimes hot. Baseball players are not hot um <laughs> but nascar i think i don't know i don't know enough about it i don't think anyone does sus- they're in the car the whole time exactly but then they take the helmet off and it's like a big reveal so i'm very oh, excited yeah. to see if there's any daddies out you there. don't really get too much of a hint of what their body looks like because they wear those onesies you know what and i'm not too body uh 
too body focused or focused. centric. Yeah, I, I like a thick boy. I like a skinny boy. Really? It's all about yeah. the face. Um, kind of. Or a yeah. mask is okay, it's like kind a driver's of about the helmet. Face, the look, the overall appearance. It's the whole thing together. Because you can be, you can be thick or big, but you have to right. like, like it has to look right on you. Like mm. it can't look like unkept. I've got one for you. Like then. a sad thickness. Jack Black. Um, I'm just not attracted to him. <laughs> like I'm attracted There's... to him as a person, but like sexually, I'm not like ooh. Give me that tenacious D. Oh. <laughs> I've seen it. I used to work at a movie theater in Hollywood and he used to come in and that was really cool. But at no points during his visits to the movie theater was I like, damn, I want to plow that man. Oh, man. He's just like, he seems just like a cool dude. Yeah, he does. He feels like a cool uncle, maybe. Yeah, but he doesn't necessarily have the look that gets me going. Good. I think he's fine. He has like a wife and kids. Oh, he does? Yeah. Oh, thank God. Okay. Yeah, he's doing great. I was worried for him. He's also a millionaire. Oh, my probably. God. He's so rich. So for sure. He's fine. And he loves what he does. He loves it. I got to see him perform once, and it was the coolest thing ever. No it way. It was so cool. Tenacious D at Cal Jam Festival last two years ago. Two years ago? Yeah. Last two years ago. How's Kyle doing? I hope he's married and happy. Kyle, is he also in Tenacious D? Yeah, he's he's okay. the other guy, the big fat guy. They that's all bald. seem great. Like they were all just like jamming out. <sighs> it's cool to watch old people have fun. <laughs> it makes me feel happy. Well, Scottsdale has a lot of that too, so I'm sure. Oh yeah, I've been watching a lot of stepdads eat sandwiches with their stepkids. Oh, it's beautiful, adorable. Yeah. Do you want to know what Kylie named her ten feet? Is this true? Was the did she post this on Instagram? She did. Did you miss it? I miss the naming. She's of priority one for us. I know. I I do love her. So one time I went to go see. Uh, this is my other celebrity encounter. This was like Camp Rock was in concert. That movie that Demi Lovato and the Jonas, Jonas Brothers, Brothers did for Disney, and they were in concert. And I went to go see them at the Irvine Spectrum, and I don't know why. Oh, I don't know. I had like VIP passes to this concert and it was a big deal to me. Or no, I don't even think, well, maybe I did. I don't remember. But I was walking around and I saw Kendall and Kylie and this was when like Keeping Up with the Kardashians just came out. Yeah. And so we all look super young. I have a face full of braces. And so I have a picture with Kendall and Kylie pre, you know, like huge pre -knife. mega success and pre knife. Yeah. Oh, okay. But it's wild. Wow. To see how successful we all are now. That's that's amazing. <laughs> but I can't wait. I feel like at some point I'm going to like hang out with them. I don't know. Sometimes I just get these like weird feelings that like certain things will just happen. Well, if you put it's it out into the like universe. It's almost like manifesting, but sometimes it's like, it's not that I'm like actively being like, oh, I want to hang. Like, because I'll be fine if I never hang out with them in my life. But there's just part of me that's like. There's going to be some party I go to where they're going to be there, but it'll just be cool to be like, look at how crazy this picture is from forever ago. Are you going to fangirl over them if you see them again? You don't, don't seem know. like that's the type. A, that's one of those things where I'm like, I don't know how it would go. There's certain people who I'm like, I know I would absolutely freak out over them. I don't know. It could go either way. I who? could freak out, but I could also be like, chill. Who would you freak out Lady over? Lady Gaga. Really? And I'm yeah. curious on how you would freak out. Too. I've had many dreams of me meeting her in all different kinds of scenarios that would play out. Scenarios where she hates me and I start crying. Scenarios where I hate her and I'm like, you're nothing like who you act, like who you say you are. There's scenarios where we're best friends. There's scenarios where it's just a quick meet and greet. There's been multiple scenarios, but pretty much every time I cry. Oh. In like a good way. Oh, or, okay, okay. Or not good way, I guess, but... Yeah, there are I'm always, always tears involved. Yeah, though. so if I met her, I think I would freak out. Or I've, like, processed it so much in my head that by the time I meet her, I would just be like, yeah, I've done this before. I... I've met you so many times in my dreams. That's what I would say Would you her. tell That's her that? That's the first thing I would say. <laughs> She'd be like, hey, That's a good starter. I'm Stephanie, and I'd be like, I know, I've met you so many times in my dreams. <laughs> That probably wouldn't be the first time she's heard that. No, so but I would I like to think it is. I'd like to think that I'm original, but yeah, I'm not. Not to, not to denigrate it. Yeah. I think it's gonna be it's gonna be great. All right. Any other advice for Kendall, Kylie? I forgot which one this is. Dude, they don't need my advice. They're doing great. Look at how beautiful she is. She's so freaking perfect. 
She has Except one for tiny the toe. little toe. It, yeah, it is interesting because it's her middle toe and it's smaller than her other toes. Could she get work done on it? Um, Could she get a toe filling? I think she would have to shave down the other toes because I don't think, or maybe she could add bone to it, but I think she's like, I think she's fine. What about just it. a cap? You know how there are those fake fingers? Oh, yeah. And you she just can put pop a fake toe. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised. She does have little bunionettes. That is the most adorable way I've heard those referred well, to. Well, because the bunions are the ones by the big toe that stick out. She doesn't really have bunions. She has pretty normal feet. But on the Did side you make of, up that word, by no, the way? No, it's, it's, I've learned this when I got my foot surgery. Because they said that I could also get bunionette surgery. And I'm like, that's too much. I don't need it. But now that it, I know about it, I'm like, I absolutely need it. It kind of sounds like raisinets. It sounds like yeah. a snack. Well, because the bunionette is the one on the side of the pinky toe. So that's when it goes out instead of it just being like one straight shot down the pinky toe line. See how it kind of goes out a little bit? Yeah. That's a little bunionette. So you can get huh. surgery on that. Where they fixed. Yeah. The more I stare at her feet, the more that I think they're weird. I just don't care about feet. Me neither. I'm I'm like very unbothered by it. Unless it's my own, then I'm self-conscious. I have such large feet. I don't like them very much. I think I'm a size 13 and a half. My brother, one of my brothers is a 14. How many brothers do you have? Six. No, I'm kidding. No. I, have, I have two. Two brothers and two sisters. Aw. Yeah. Yeah, wait. Why are you guys so tall? How tall are your parents? My mother is six foot. My dad's six one. Oh, so they're like... Because my they're, mom's like 5'11 or 5'10 or maybe 6 foot, something like that. Mm -hmm. And then my dad's like 6 foot as well. And I'm 5'10. But sometimes that happens where the parents are like pretty tall but like average tall. Like nothing crazy. And then the yeah. kids are just like beanstalks. You know, they were pretty strict when we were growing up on, on caffeine and sleeping. Are you we, Mormon? No, I'm not. Although... <laughs> You have Mormon vibes. Oh, fuck. Everybody says that. Yeah. I think Every... it's because you sit up straight and you have like... Uh, do I have the Mormon like posture? Part your hair, yeah. All right. Well, maybe... Do I look less Mormon now? No, I think you're I've just like... i ruffled my hair. No, I think you just like... I think you care. That's what gives off Mormon vibes. It's like you care about things. You know? That's I'll, a good thing. I guess I'll take it's it as a compliment. It's not a bad thing. I know yeah. plenty of cool Mormons. Yeah. Like three. <laughs> no, like three. Yeah. Now let's move on. I think we gave our advice to Kylie, which is you don't need our advice. Yeah. Do whatever you want fine. with you and your yeah. janky toes. You figured it out. Now we're going to go on to our last segment, and this is Biz Whizzes. Mm. Now we want to help business owners, and we've created a segment called Biz Whizzes where we take a one-star review that whizzes on these bizzes and give advice to the biz on how to clean that whiz. You want to be a rapper, huh? I do. Yeah. The first Mormon rapper. Every Mormon wants to be a rapper. Joseph Smizith. That's what I'm going to name myself. Oh, my God. The J to the O to the S E. <laughs> you know me. Because I'm... Um, so I happy. Know. I don't know enough about Mormonism to like really do some deep cuts. Yeah. I've only got one lives, but I got five wives. Ooh. And I... Can't drink caffeine. You know what I mean. I but I'm still a fiend. Wife. No, they all beat their wives for sure. <laughs> oh my god, that's a lot of work because there are like seven wives. There's at the so top. many wives. Yeah, they have to stay in shape somehow. <laughs> Moving on. Now that we've lost all of our Mormon audience, we're gonna read some one star reviews. This week, people get in and out of in and out with a bad taste in their mouth after these one star reviews. Is this getting better for my rap career? No, I think it's getting worse. All right. <laughs> so would would you like to read the first review, Allie? <laughs> Purely K prays to Jesus with her one star, dot, dot, dot. Repeatedly asked for no cheese, and what did I get? Freaking cheese! Maybe they need a bit more training at this one. Repeatedly. What is she doing when she's... Like, how psych... Like, She's super nervous about it. Hey, so I'm going to get a burger with no cheese. Once again, that's no cheese on my <laughs> burger. I would just like a burger with no cheese. Like, how many opportunities do you get when you're ordering to say that you don't want cheese? And also, if you're doing it repeatedly, you're saying it so much that it almost... You just are thinking cheese. Like, just say it once. Hey, I have a dairy allergy. I would like no cheese on my burger. And then order the rest of your meal. 
But if you say cheese that many times, it's confusing. In and Out's a busy place. They're gonna fuck up your order. That's what that's what you get when you go to In and Out. You go, maybe this is the one time that they're gonna do regular onions instead of grilled. But you expect that. They're a busy establishment. They believe in God. Give them a fair shot, okay? They work hard. They love the Lord. You practice humility. You hit it on the head, I feel, with the subliminally telling them cheese. Yeah, when you say it that when you say no cheese that many times, you just hear cheese and you assume, oh, they want cheese. Yeah. Hi, Cal. How can I help you? No cheese, please, but I'll take a burger. No cheese. Just confirming no cheese, right? Cheese. And cheese, then- cheese, cheese. That's all they hear. Yeah, it's annoying. Yeah. Also, maybe they need mo- a bit more training at this one. You know what they do? You don't even know the training process, okay? I did not. I applied to work at an In-N-Out franchise in my hometown. I did not get it because they do the most insane training. They take care of their team. And I don't I don't appreciate that disrespect. They work What type hard. of training would they do for her? They're like, okay, when they say no, no cheese, what do you do? uh cheese no let's start again let's start yeah. from the top like no i don't think that that's can i read the next one too you absolutely can tasha k tries next day delivery in his one star got a cheeseburger drive through went home and there was nothing but the patty went back the next day and they refused to fix it come on in and out highly disappointed let me break this one down though all right Got a cheeseburger drive through went home, and there was nothing but the patty. That's got to be a bold-faced lie. I've never gotten just the patty. I Unless think, he's saying he buns are included. The, yeah, I think but he, he meant to say there's no cheese on my cheeseburger. We got another no cheese. But for all there. we know, it could have just been a patty. It could have just been a loose Ugh. patty. Ugh. Keto. <laughs> went back the next day, and they refused to fix it. Okay, so this is, here we go. So I've had this happen where I've ordered something drive through or Uber Eats and the order has been wrong. And there's part of me that's like, oh, I should go in tomorrow and like get a refund or tell them what happened mm. and like maybe get a free thing. Most of the time I'm too lazy to do that. I'm like, who cares? Mistakes happen. It's hard working in food service. I get it. But... When he says went back the next day and they refused to fix it, what does he mean by fix? Like, did he not eat the burger and then brought it back being like, put cheese on it now and heat it up? Like, like what is his idea of fixing it? How or would maybe, that situation have been better? Yeah, or maybe he was like, I ate it, but you just have to give me my money back. Yeah. Believe me when I say that there was no cheese on it. Yeah, I guess I, I would see. I'm the type of person who, if I had the intentions of going back to fixing it, I would take a picture of it. I would take a picture of it with my receipt, so it says what time and day it was. A picture of the burger. Open up the pa- open up the patty if there is one. Don't put a filter on or it because that'll just make it look better. No filter. No, you want it to look disgusting. And then I would show them. I'd be like, "Hey, this is what I got yesterday." Mm-hmm. Give me my money back or give me another burger. Right. It's hard to double down two days in a row on those cheeseburgers, but it is doable. Oh, yeah. In and out. Yeah. Do you like In and Out? Nope. <laughs> so, I think it's overrated. I think so too. I lived in New York for about eight years and I came back here and people were like, Did you get In and Out yet? And I'm like, No, I, that's not one of the things on my list to do. Yeah. I remember, well, I'm like from Southern California, so they're everywhere. The Mecca. Yeah. Of and I just like, and I used to just like never order burgers when I went places. Like my dad would make burgers at home and I just never thought like to order it. I don't know why. So I didn't no, get. No, same. Yeah, yeah, I just never had In and Out until high school, and people were like, "You're you're you live here, and you've never had In and Out," and I just had it. And so I remember my friend took me; she was very excited. We got our burgers, and everyone talks about how great it is. And I had it, and I was like, "Yeah, this is fine. It's fine. It's, it's a decent, okay. It's a it's nice, okay. but the the lines are way too long to get it. The drive throughs are always." packed there are like 40 people inside working by the way have you seen how that works it's insane and it's like i don't want to wait that long for just an average burger it's fine it's good to have if you sometimes you're like in the mood for it you're craving it and i get that way sometimes but people just like hype it up way too much i think it's so overrated it's a decent good nice meal but 
it's whatever. I could go my whole the rest of my life without ever having it again. Same. I feel it's okay. The sauce is pretty good that they put on the burger. Uh, the patty, no. That sauce makes me want to hurl. Really? Yeah, I'm so not into it. Oh, I like it. I, yeah. It's like a, it's a slightly acidic yet creamy sauce. Uh, uh, I know the way I'm uh, describing it is really uh, appetizing. Yeah, I don't know. It free, and I've tried it. I'm like the type of person where if I don't like something... I don't give up on it. I'll still try and see maybe my palate has changed. And that's one of those things. That You're like, going to be an excellent wife someday. No, I think I'll be a terrible <laughs> wife for sure. I'm more forgiving with food than I am with people. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. In like, and out oh, the animal style sauce in another shot. But I'm uh, like, you didn't text me back. You're done. <laughs> oh, shit. Okay. Yeah. But um, yeah, it's fine. I don't care. All right. And then the fries, if you... The fries I do like. I like them with cheese on top. Okay. Love the cheese on top with the grilled onions. Mmm. Is that animal style? No. What's animal style? Because animal style is that sauce that they have. Oh, uh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. The fries are real. I like the fries, but if they're unattended or uneaten oh, yeah, for more go. than 10 minutes. But that's why they're good because you know that they're legit. McDonald's, you could have them for two years and they'll taste the same. Oh, that's true. Yeah. And in and out, they're making them fresh. So it's like, you got to be quick. Get in you there. You got to jump on it. Get out. Get them fries. Yeah. That's why it's called in and out. You got to get in. You got to get out or else it's over. <laughs> Just like the food. It's going to go in. It's going to go out. Yeah. Real quick. Real quick. Uh, so maybe two days in a row isn't that good. No. Just try and get the money back. It's too much. Leave yeah. a note. Just leave a note. No more like, notes. Notes are canceled. Uh, uh, hey, my burger was incorrect. Here's my number if you can help me. Yeah, I live right down the street, so if you ever need anything, come by. <laughs> Let me know. Here's a pie. I'm your neighbor. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, that is the end of this podcast. Thank you so much for listening. Allie, thank you so much for joining. Thanks for having me. Where can people find you? Instagram. <laughs> okay, go to my Instagram. My Instagram's not Ali Mac. It's N O T A L I M A C. I post I post way too much on there, so you'll find everything you need to know about me through Instagram, whether you like it or not. Perfect. So you can follow her there. Your website. Ali yeah, I have shows coming up all over the damn place, mostly on the West Coast right now. But yeah, my website's just my name dot com. So it's AllieMakovsky.com. Nice. And that'll all be in the show notes so people can find you. Yeah. Super easy. So easy. All right. Thank you so much, Allie. Thanks for having me. I was just going to say, guys, if you haven't yet, subscribe, leave a review, tell a friend about us. And then also go on over to Allie's podcast, Resting Bitch. Subscribe to that. Leave a review. Tell a friend. Just keep on listening, y'all. You hear? Bye. Bye. Bye, Perbally. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>